back to part 2 of my 164 scale DIY shock tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you my method for building a coilover shock. This particular shock will be well suited for any off-road related build. Now you can build these shorter or longer just going to depend on your compression spring height. Here's what you're going to need to get started. Some 332nd and 1 16th brass tubing, some earring backs, a compression spring, some CA glue or two-part epoxy, some solder and a mini torch, a cordless drill, some mini drill bits, various files, a jeweler saw, and of course some pliers or tweezers. Now the last video I showed you how to make the eyelets for the shock. This is the same method here. You're just going to make the eyelets a little wider at this time. Earring bass can be found in any craft store or Walmart in the jewelry section or of course Amazon. You can use either style here, you'll just have to remove the plastic backing on the one style which just pops right off. These can be tricky to hold so use some kind of pliers, just don't squeeze too tight. Using a taper bit you're going to want to drill a hole in the upper part of the earring back first. This will allow the 332 brass tube to slide through. Take your time with these and check the fitment as you go. You don't want it too loose, tighter is better for soldering. Don't try to drill these out with a regular drill bit either. The metal is too thin and it will distort. I like to use this cheap Dremel tool I got from Harbor Freight. It's nowhere near as powerful as a Dremel which is perfect for small stuff like this. You will see me using this quite often. There is a little rubber insert in here you're going to run into. Just to drill it out, you're not going to need that. As you can see I keep checking the fitment as I go and this is still a little looser than I would have liked. When that side is done flip it over and repeat on the other side. Now remember I'm only showing the upper part here there is a lower part to this as well and that's going to be the 1 16th so you're going to have to drill another one just a smaller hole this time. Once you've drilled it out, you can mock up the shock to see the length you will need to cut the upper portion of the tube. Using the spring and earring back we just drilled out, I set the length in the middle of the spring and then make a mark by the earring back. This is where you will solder the eyelets to later. Of course if you're making multiples, you don't have to do the mock up every time. You can do it just once and then cut everything out. Using the same method as the eyelets, I cut the 332nd tube on the mark I just made. Now we're going to mock up the shock once more. This time to set the length for the lower portion of the shock.
just make sure you set the length with the lower part beside the upper part since you need a small length of the lower tube to ride inside the upper tube and this makes it easier to judge the proper length. Too much and you won't get proper travel. Too little and it may slide out. Now cut the lower tube to length just as we've done earlier in the video. I then take both upper and lower tubes and on one end using a round diamond file. I like to give them both a fish mouth cut. This makes fitting the eyelets to them much easier and makes a stronger joint. This is what you should end up with. And this is what you should have so far. This is all our pieces laid out and ready for final assembly. Now we were using the same jig I showed in the last video. If you're going to be doing these, I really recommend making one. I slide the eyelet over the aluminum post and then place the tube tightly up against it and prepare to solder it. I use the aluminum because the solder will not stick to the aluminum, only the brass. Now I'm nowhere near a professional at soldering. If you have access to a jeweler's torch with a fine tip, that would be much better suited for this type of work. But this is what I have, and being careful I can get some decent results. Just make sure your pieces are clean. The solder I'm using is a silver bearing solder paste with flux added in. It's super easy to add to these tiny parts and melts at a lower temp, and provides a pretty solid joint. Next we're going to solder the earring backs to the shock post to make the top of the shock. Make sure your wide end is toward where the spring will seat. Place your part in an upright position using a small vise or something to hold it in place. You'll want the solder to flow down the side of the tube. And repeat for the lower part. Now the only thing I'm doing different here is just using a small spacer in between the aluminum jig and the lower shock post. This just helps to set the shock post in the middle of the eyelet.
With everything soldered, check the travel of the shock and fitment. Now is the time to make any final adjustments. Once you're happy with it, center up the spring and apply a dab of CA glue to the spring and the shock top. Once set, repeat for the other side. If you want, adding a little two-part epoxy around this area will strengthen it as well. The spring is what holds the shock together so a little extra glue won't hurt. And here is our completed shock. I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty good looking coil over. But wait, there's more. You can of course keep your shock looking like this, or we can do one more thing and add a little something extra to take it over the top. Now mark and cut a piece of 1 16th aluminum tubing to about a half of an inch. I forgot to record this part, but using a micro drill bit, I believe it was a gray one, drill a little ways into each end of the tube. Now using our aluminum MIG wire or other wire, cut a small piece and secure it inside the tube with some glue. Once cured, bend a nice curve in the wire at the top of the tube. Mark how far you want this to sit from the shock and snip it. Cap the bottom of the tube with a piece of MIG wire as well, and once glued, file down flush. Now we can secure our remote reservoir to our shock. Now it's ready for some real off-roading. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you did, hit that like and subscribe and thanks for supporting the channel. Items used in this video will be listed in the description. Also follow me on the socials. And if you would like to support further, I also have a Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, later.